Okay, so now it's time to look at the live clay tools. Now, what live clay means is that it will dynamically subdivide your mesh depending on the size of the brush that you're using. So what is this? What does that mean? Well, if we look at the wireframe, now I'm just using the draw tool here. But if I start sculpting, you'll see that it's only moving the points. So if I want to sculpt a very fine detail, I, I'm going to have some difficulty doing that. I would have to either subdivide that area in order to give it some more resolution, and then I could go in and sculpt that tiny detail. But if I decide I need to sculpt that same small detail over here, I'm kind of out of luck. So let me just undo that. So a solution to this is called Live Clay. And the way that Live Clay works is that it will dynamically change the number of triangles in order to fit the, oh, undid a little too far, in order to fit the size of the brush you're using. So you see, I'm using a, you know, fairly average size brush, but if I shrink it down, you'll see I get significantly more detail. And that means that this detail I'm sculpting will appear smooth and non-jagged regardless of the size of the actual brush. So if you only want detail in a very specific area, this is an, this is an excellent way to do that. So you've got, whoops, Hold up. Alright, so what happened there guys was I hit the 2 key which basically turns on different types of solid shading. I just hit the 5 key to get back to uh, regular shaded mode. Gotta be careful when you're reaching for the W key. So within Live Clay there are several different tools. Now some very special ones would be things like Crease Clay which uh, as its name would probably suggest, creases things together. So if we start making that brush really small, then it does an excellent job, as you can see right there, of creating some very sharp creases. Much like the uh, pinch tool, only this one is meant to work with the live clay system. Now another important one that we have is the snake clay. So if you need to sculpt a feature out, then what you can do is you can click and drag away from your object and you see it will add polygons in the direction that you dragged. So this is, it's very easy to get distracted and get a little carried away with this one, but as you see the topology is evenly distributed and it just reacts instantaneously to your drawing. Undo all that. We also have um, a few of these are fairly specific use cases like swirl clay, just you know, swirls, but you see the topology is changing or you've got ripple clay which is mainly designed to work with fairly large brushes but if, another interesting one to mention here is clean clay now what that does is it does pretty much the opposite of what something like live clay would have done in that it reduces your polygon count now the larger your brush is with this one the more it will reduce so you see here I have all this very dense topology and I can get rid of it. So if you have a lot of polygons somewhere, like for instance, if this sphere was going to stay as a sphere, I don't need all of these polygons. So I could go in with a very large brush and just start to clean that up. So if your machine starts slowing down, or if you've got too many polygons, you're running out of memory, this is one way that you can try to 
reduce the hardware requirements of your project. And you see, if I exit out a wireframe, it looks the exact same. Now if I did that here, you see we lose that detail because there's no longer the polygons required to maintain it. But when you're doing a very, very fine detail pass, some live clay is an excellent tool to have access to, especially if you only need that detail in very specific isolated areas. Okay, that pretty much wraps up the discussion on live clay. Most of these tools you just have to play around with in order to learn. Next video, we'll move on to the adjustment tools, some fairly similar to voxel tools, but with a few unique items.